I'm sure you had lots of friends, and you have a lot of friends, and you will have more friends. And the thing is, about this book, well, you'll find out. Friendship, well, what is really the true meaning of friendship? Hello, fellow bookquesters, it is I, Aram the Bookquester, and today I have this awesome epic book. Friend or Fiction by Abby Cooper herself, and well, let's get right on to it. So, the main character is name is Jade, and she is a girl who lives in Tevita. Now, Tevita is a place where people come and go, which means that they stay there for a week, and then they leave when they have enough money. So basically, Jade really has no friends. And she basically, she has a lot of trauma about, well, her father has liver cancer. So basically, she's really depressed and all her friends were not really understanding to her. And she thought a, a real friend would come and they, they would comfort her. They would help her through all this, not just say, why, are, why did you not come to my birthday party? Because... You have to go to the hospital or something. It's, it's all right. And basically, she wrote about a perfect best friend, a best friend that is understanding, would stick to her side until the end. And she named it her Zoe. And she wrote all these stories for a long time, for two years, in fact. And then, Clue came along. Now, Clue is a weird little boy who got his nickname because if people didn't know the answer to the questions that the teacher was adding, asking, he would always give a little bit of sign language, body language clue to them so that they could probably answer the question that the teacher had asked them. For example, um, where is your heart? And he would be like, or something like that. So that's why he got his nickname and he's a weird little guy. And he steals Jade's notebook and he knows about Jade's little secret about Zoe and stuff, and he takes it, and Jade is mortified, but she can't really do anything about it without making a big scene. And then Jade, on her own, decides to go to the Forbidden Pond, where she's not supposed to go, because the tar pond water is really, really dirty. And then she sees Clue there, with her notebook, and for a second she fears the worst. Was Clue trying to rip her notebook into shreds and put it in the pond or something? No, but Clue grabs three drops, I'm pretty sure, on the bug. And then the next day, a girl named Zoe joins the school. You can see where this is heading. It's a little bit of magic pond water, and her stories, well, Jade's stories about Zoe, has become true. Zoe was a real person now. And it's really, really, really great for Jade because, and life is heaven for a while. Because Zoe was the epic great friend that she had always dreamed of. And she thought that she could not have a better friend than Zoe. And basically, they have a good time at first. Then, of course, pe people around, around her starts to talk about it. Like, for example, her English teacher, Mrs. Yang, or something along those lines, she said, tells Zoe, well, she doesn't know about the whole our new student Zoe is actually a girl that I made from my own stories thing, but she knows about what she writes about, and she says that things are doing going too well for Zoe. Books with no conflict, with no unhappiness, is not a good book. If you just have good things for your characters, then, well, there's really no conflict, what's the point of reading it if it's just happy ever after? And she has a point, but still, she doesn't listen. If Zoe is happy, that's all that matters. Why should I create more conflict in her story? And basically, Jade can control basically whatever Zoe does by writing it in her notebook. Like, Zoe decided to sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star in front of the entire class or something, and she would do it immediately. And basically, she has this absolute control over her best friend. Then, she, her family decides to go on a trip to the Grand Canyon. Because her, fa her father's cancer has become a little bit better, um, the cancer, the hospital decides they were going to fund a little trip to the Grand Canyon, which is super cool. And together they go, and there we find out that Bo also has a very similar talent as Zoe. Zoe, when she, I mean Jade. 
Jade, when she has problems, she writes it down, she creates her own story. Bo, however, draws it and then destroys that. If she has, he has some sort of fear, he draws it and then he creates a little superhero thing to destroy it or something like that. And I think that's an excellent way of dealing with stress. And we find out that Bo always says the bad guy is strong, the bad guy must be defeated, we have a superhero and stuff. We find out that Bo's bad guy's name is Can Sir. Well, spell it out C A N and then dash and C I R. And that meant that Bo really did know about his dad's cancer, and he was always really worried about him. I mean, cancer and cancer. So, I mean, I think that's really touching. And basically, Jade comforts her brother, and and then she go when she goes on the trip, she meets Clue there, and she's like, "What? Why is Clue with the cancer supporty hospital trip thingy?" And she finds out that. Our dear Clue's sister died from a brain tumor a couple years back, and that he still goes on these trips to honor her his sister's memory. And we find out what Clue really wants. We found out that the Clue, who had written about his sister so much in his notebook, he wants to bring her his his own sister back to life by using the book. That's what she wants. And that's what he wants. And 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 Jane, she, I mean, someone's sister. It's more important, right? So she decides that she can give up Zoe if um, our dear Clue really wants his sister back. Very heartwarming. But thankfully, or not thankfully, Clue decides that he 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 wants Jade to be happy. And she decides that she didn't need his sister back because he had Jade, and Jade was a really good best friend. And so Clue and Jade also become friends. And Clue starts to tell Jade, if you're controlling her every move and you're not letting the person that you created with your bug be a person, that's not friendship, that's just controlling it. At first Jade ignores it, but then she starts to think that Clue is right. And so finally she phones Zoe and she says that she's really sorry and she did that and that about controlling her and stuff and Zoe says it's okay because she was written to be really understanding. And then when they come back to Tevera, they find out that Zoe has left to explore the world. She doesn't know really anything about the world, she literally popped out of a book after all. And, and our dear Jade has set her free. Under her notebook, she says that everything Zoe does, everything Zoe does was in her control, and she could do anything she wanted to, or something like that. And basically, she set Zoe free, and Zoe left. And I think, and Jade thought, that it would be better for both of them. And then, the Sparkle Girls. The Sparkle Girls are these group of girls who like sparkly things, and I, I guess the, mo the popular girls at school. And we find out that the Sparkle Girls don't really aren't paired together because they're they like everything sparkly. They are paired together. They are a bunch of people who lost their best friends. When they saw someone who was really depressed after losing their best friend to moving away, they sat with each other, and that made the group. And they welcomed Jade into their group because Jade has lost her best friend as well, and she was looking really really lonely. So, yeah, I mean. It's a pretty good story, and the book ends like that. I honestly think that the book reveals the painful truth about friendship. That you are friends because you argue, because you fight over things, because you disagree. And because of that, your strength, your friendship is strengthened. And if you try to control everything that your, that your best friend does, either with a magical notebook that your best friend sprang from, or just in real life, like blackmailing your best friend or something, that, that's not friendship, that's something else entirely that's definitely not even close to friendship. Friendship is when you respect each other, not control some other people. I mean, I mean, I once thought when I was like 4th or 5th grade, there was this kid and I'm not gonna say any names, but he was, I thought he was my friend, but it was more like he was controlling me than he was really my friend. So. I think that's a really good example of something that happens in every day in every school in the world. 
and I really do think that this book says that you really shouldn't try to control your friends, and if you are trying to be controlled, you should try to break free of it. And I think that it's an excellent book that shows all these nice messages with a nice little, nice little drop of fancy was from realistic fiction. And like always, your book quester, Aaron the Book Quester, highly recommended book, Abby Cooper doesn't disappoint, Sticks and Stones, read it for Book Bowl Sacramento. Hey, what did I expect?